Hey everyone, this is your Media of the East and with another Japan Vlog. This is week 10, I believe. So it's time to talk about what I did last week and finally like, we're getting back in the swing of things of things happening this time. Alright, after my week of going to the amusement park, I really wasn't expecting to do anything that, that week. So, I then forgot I signed up for a peace trip, which is basically me and a couple students in, that also signed up going to some historical sites about the Nagasaki nuclear bombing. Now, I know a lot of us know about the final, one of the final events of World War II, which was the bombing of Nagasaki and Hiroshima. And since I'm in Nagasaki, one of the places I wanted to see was the impact zone. And considering I'm, I'm like really close, I'm like about half an hour away, just or 15 minutes by bus just to get there. So I was pretty interested to see how, what the place is like. So I might as well talk about my trip there. So first of all, we went to the main Nagasaki University, which is near the park, and we were told like about the whole events, and we even got to see the one of the survivors of the nuclear bombing, and she took told about her own experience with it, and it was a very interesting and sad story. It, and it figured because coming from the pers from a person who grew up. In the country that caused this, it gives you a different point of view of seeing, like, really, I can't believe I imagine people going through like this. Because, again, it shows the the, 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 the negative impact that, some, that things like this can happen, where good intentions could potentially be ne negative sometimes in the long run, which was the harm of innocence. And all I can go into... I don't want to go into the whole controversies about like was it was it necessary or about the whole getting rid of nuclear weapons thing. I'm, I'm not going to talk about that. But I want what I want to talk about is just a gal of different viewpoint from an actual native. I shouldn't say native civilian who was in Nagasaki and got had the full front of the impact of the nuclear bomb and her whole family was affected that day and like about most of half of her family was killed almost instantaneously or afterwards after the bomb dropped and it wasn't hard for her it was devastating as much as everyone else and it doesn't stop there but I'll get to that in a minute I dropped something God damn it. Uh, I'll get I'll get to it later anyway what happened next though of course, got lunch at the university. Just decided to walk around. It was a pretty crummy day. Again, it's been raining like heck over here. And again, it's, it's getting typhoon season, but I shouldn't too worry too much. It's just getting the weather's getting hot and humid bit as the days keep going on and on. So what did happen was, after that, we went to a... Uh, what, I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to go remember in order so I don't forget. What happened next was... God. I can't remember. I'm, I'm trying to remember. Hard just to remember what I did, and this, this was only just a few days ago. Huh? What did I do? I know I went to place. Oh yeah. Um, I went to a one of the magistrates' house. I think like the head of Nagasaki at the time. It's, it's, a, it's a museum, it's a recreation of the whole building, and we got to see a bit of old samurai stuff and foreigner stuff that, like, during the time when the foreigners were coming to Japan and influencing some of its culture. And got to see a lot of, a lot of old stuff there. Very interesting to see. And for some odd reason, they had a banner for Evangelion there, of all things. I, just odd. I don't know. Anyway, so we got to see that. Then after that, we went to... Ah, then after that, then we went to the... To the Peace Park, which was the whole major park of the Impact Zone. So we have got our tour guide, and she was showing us around of the stat... This huge statue is like one of the major tourist attractions and centerpieces of Nagasaki. It's a peace statue where 
it's of a, of a man with his two hands or two arms up, one pointing to the sky to indicate where the, the, the bomb falling from the sky, and the other hand pointing like this or like this, and a hand a gesture for peace. So it's symbolizing a, a, a peaceful route, at least this is how I'm describing it, a peaceful route without the use of weaponry falling from above. And that was one of the main things that Japan suffered the most was the air raids. So we went through a part, we got to see a couple of the statues that the many other countries donated in memoriam to the lives that were lost. And I got to see a couple of America's statues and they were pretty interesting. They even There was a fountain in the centerpiece as well that also this was coincidental since I had to read up a story for a literary course on people who after the some that were surviving after the bomb they had severe burns all over the body and they were very thirsty but the thing but the problem was the water that was around was contaminated from the radiation and people died shortly after the ingesting it and that was one of the one things about it I can't really, really put it together because I couldn't read the epitaph that was in the center of it, but uh, it, I don't want to seem disrespectful, but I'm just trying. I know there was something to go on about that. Okay, then afterwards we come to, we went to one of the uh, bombing shelters that was for that Japan used, which were burrowed into the hillside. It was like miniature holes that people crammed in, and just looking from the size of it, they were. Tiny, very tiny, and as I heard, like almost whole huge families would have to squeeze in there just to get away. It, it's just devastating and frightening just to think about staying in there while air raids and the bombings were happening. And it's just terrifying and just almost a cruel way to think about it. So then we went to the fine, the main centerpiece, which was the epicenter, the hypo center. Of the bomb itself, and the in the exact center was a was a, God, I'm trying to remember, think of the wrong word a obelisk. It was an obelisk memorial detailing the lives that were lost, and you could tell like the whole place was like a crater. I, it's probably like they just constructed it to to be like that, but it was the very center of where the bombing took place, and the, right next to this to the obelisk was the ruins of a church which is also one of the significant buildings that was destroyed during the bombing and it was like near that center as well but it was moved but the remains were moved here so our final stop after the memorial well let me describe a bit more it was something being much like how i was describing being a foreigner right there when i heard the one of the survivor's story it was another thing like i was right in the center where peop where the cit citizens of the country I live in dropped the bomb to end the war. It was a war to end suffering for other countries but at the cost of, other, of innocent innocent lives. And I still think to myself like was it really worth it? Well of course like it was only to end the war but there were some people thinking that we didn't have to Dropped the bomb in the first place, and Japan was just about to give up because they were running out of resources and people and were losing faith. But without any response, America just went up ahead and just said, "Well, we're gonna go. Well, we gotta push them a little further." So I hope these nuclear bombs might do the trick. And there were still people even back then, even some in America, that were against the use of nuclear weapons. Many scientists, in fact, because when I went, because the next place I went to was the. <laughs> nuclear bomb museum which was the detailing the events and many things that were survived the bombs so when I went through there was like there was an entire exhibit about the think the details about nuclear bombs and the and the world just trying to not use them or and I know that there's like a whole piece thing about use not using nuclear weapons but it's very complicated and and very long and it's hard for me to even try to describe this whole thing. I'm not the person to talk about it. All I can say is that it's just this one bit like where there's so many people that were against it from the start and it just shows like where we are 
now because of these nuclear weapons and the other countries that are using them. So, but what I did see was pretty interesting and could be a bit shocking to people and pretty graphic with the images they show. So what they did, well, first thing I saw when I got in there was, oh, I did make a couple of new friends from some people that were from other schools. So there was that, so that I got, got a couple of new friends. So what I did what, from there was I went down, it was it was all in the basement level. So when I went down there, I got to see those miniature uh, diorama of the surrounding Nagasaki area as it looked before the bombing and it showed a simulation of what it looked like afterwards. And then when, after that was over, I went over to many cases and displays showing uh, things, clothing, everyday stuff that survived the bomb and what the effect was. One of the interesting things was, it was like that was shown at the very beginning, even before the simulation, was a singular clock that survived the bomb. And it showed the exact time of 11.02, which was the time the bomb dropped on Nagasaki. And still there in the museum, all in front of the seat, the very first thing you see when you get into the museum. It, It's amazing to think, like, Sometimes small objects like that that could be easily obliterated, incinerated, or just blown away, never to be seen again, it still survived for us to see to this day. Another interesting thing I saw was they had a they had a, a tree stump, or like the cut of a tree stump. So what happened was people were cutting into the wood of the tree to like well tear it down, and they saw that they were getting glass shards, so they were confused. And it turns out, after the bomb, the tr one gl a couple glass shards were were flung right into a tree that still survived. Yet the tree grew over the glass shards over time, and it wasn't discovered until many decades later. And I was thinking, man, just just, just discover something like that out of the ordinary. The another thing was they had a full scale model of the last nuclear bomb that was used. The Fat Man, which was the larger largest bomb we had at that time, and they even showed the details like how the bomb worked. And then one of the interesting things that the main thing that I got interested in seeing was many articles of clothing, the kitchenware, the things that were melted or burned that people had on them when the bomb dropped. And it got even very graphic when you see people's disfigured faces, burning, searing flesh oozing off of them for just even just remotely surviving and they're in pain i mean i saw one woman next to me when i was looking through the display case who was like gasping and like holding her tears back she was like in shock and fear and distraught it was like it had a big impact on her obviously even if you weren't there it's still very graphic to see there was kids walking around and i was thinking I, I'm not one to judge if people bring it. It's a heavy topic to bring up, but something like the Holocaust, it's, we brought up on it early in our lives, and it's a hard topic, but we have to get through it eventually. So, And it just kind of shows that even now, there's still people that are learning of this history and how devastating these results could be and don't want it to happen again. I mean... They even one of the creepiest things, the creepiest thing that I've seen described, even looking up in my history class for the, the bombing, was when people were near the epicenter of the explosion, their bodies were incinerated so quickly it left a scorch mark that made it look like a shadow of themselves was right there, and there are still shadows in somewhere in Nagasaki in those old areas today, and that is creepy. Like, say for example, like, I'm against the wall, and I was somehow incinerated, like, in this position. You would, like, see behind me right there, my shadow, right there, that would leave a mark on the wall, all black, with my entire outline right there on the building if it was still there. That's what I'm trying to describe, like, where some people were completely gone in a flash, like, literally in a flash. 
like in less than a second when the bomb detonated, it was like up to 70,000 degrees Celsius. Not Fahrenheit, Celsius. And that was the creepiest thing. Like, to be gone in an instant and all that remains of you is that scorched shadow of your former self. And that right there was the single most disturbing thing I have seen in that museum. And one of the most dis grotesque things I have ever seen in my life. Like, I can never think of a much crueler way to go than instantaneously being incinerated on the spot without a moment's notice. It just goes to show that sometimes things like that can even have an impact on you. And then the next thing I saw, which I got my moods up a bit, was like there's still some interesting things I saw there. Like there was a bottle that was like glass bottle that was bent and melted as you can feel like and it's like Jesus. There was a lot of couple there was a couple of things in there that you were able to interact with and made it feel like I don't know, it's right something like this can uh survive. So got through the exhibit hall and went to the of course the nuclear memor nuclear test memorial area which they were describing all the events of the nuclear war. Or not nuclear war, uh nuclear testing and all the bombs. Uh, almost up to the present day and that was about the end of the tour right there and it was at the gift shop they had a couple of books and some were children's books about nuclear bombs and it's probably some families and here's the creepy thing there was this children's book all colorful and playful about two brothers and I was looking through it, it's like okay this seems so bad and then the next one of the pages I saw was People injured, melting, glass all over them, blood. Like, it was a full two page spread. Like, it's like, oh my god, what the hell am I looking at? And it's just, holy shit. Like, this is for kids? What? How can I think of kids? And it was going into graphic detail, too. Like, and how one of the brothers burns alive under the crushing impact of what was their house as the older brother sees. His family burn alive. And you see them scorching, burning. It's like, oh my god. And, it, and the fact that the scorch, the scorch remains part of the I described was disturbing. That was also disturbing. And I was thinking, how? I don't know how kids like can handle this detail, but oh my god. That's going to scare the shit out of them. And I think I vaguely remember seeing an anime adaptation of that exact book too. I'm not kidding. There are a couple anime mo movies or shorts detailing the depiction of people surviving a nuclear bomb. And it goes into that graphic detail. And it's, oh my god, I can't think about that. But that was pretty much the end of the tour. And... <sighs> I swear, if anybody ever comes here to Nagasaki, I seriously recommend checking the museum. And not because I'm trying to scare anybody, but it does go into that graphic detail. I think that some of us need to be brought attention to. And but if you, if not, you can still see some interesting exhibits that of, of some things that were around during the during the bombing. But it also goes into that it just gives you a bit of an insight of what it was like and why this is a a big cautionary tale of the use of nuclear warfare. And I signed up for this on a whim just to see the park. But I wasn't expecting to see all of that at the museum. And I got a lot of pictures that day and it's going to be disturbing when I see some when I post some of these pictures if if I remember if I got in those pictures but anyway, it I Highly recommend for anyone who goes to see Nagasaki. It's definitely an experience that probably that definitely needs to be viewed once in a while. Just something that could be of a different experience from another viewpoint. Well, with that said, this has been your Meaning of the East with the end of this vlog. And hopefully next week I actually get something to do. So with that said, until next time, take care everyone.